coming back to the right side of the heart, getting pumped into the lungs, getting oxygenated there and comes back to be recirculated from the heart again. Now, we will use this to understand what are the different types of shock. How can this cardiovascular system fail? Maybe it fails because we do not have enough circulating volume. So that's hypovolemic shock for us. The second way is when the heart is not good enough to pump out adequate amounts of blood. So that's cardiogenic shock. You have a situation where the circulatory system is obstructed either intraluminally or because of some pressure from outside. So that's obstructive shock. And then you have a situation where uh, maybe there is a lot of fluid accumulation there in the, in the interstitial space so that the oxygen that's actually reaching the tissues is not able to traverse that uh, all, all that muck that's collected outside the interstitial space and get there. So that's kind of uh, some sub-distributive shock in which you have a lot of varieties like uh, septic shock, you have uh, anaphylactic shock, you have uh, maybe neurogenic shock. So uh, I understand there are a lot of classification systems of shock, but this is one of the most, uh, the, the, one of the oh, mm, more common ones that have been used. So let's uh, look up at how oxygen delivery and metabolism get affected with shock. We have shock defined as the imbalance between oxygen delivery and oxygen requirement. So why do tissues require oxygen? Tissues require oxygen because they have to carry out an uh, aerobic metabolism and when uh, tissues do not get enough oxygen, they switch over to anaerobic metabolism. So what's the problem with anaerobic metabolism? We ha uh, both aerobic and anaerobic metabolism eventually lead to the formation of energy. The problem is that aerobic metabolism is a lot more energy efficient process than is anaerobic metabolism. So for the same amount of, uh, uh, I mean, uh, aerobic metabolism is, uh, pr results in the production of much more oxygen, much more uh, ATPs than does anaerobic metabolism. So the second problem with anaerobic metabolism obviously is that it results in the formation of this byproduct called lactic acid. Uh, but we'll come back to lactic acid in a short while. We have some other urgent things to attend to. Firstly, we have oxygen being supplied by the blood vessels to the tissues. So what happens when tissues are deprived of oxygen? There will be a, an increase in the demand for oxygen by the tissues. And as this rise in demand occurs, tissues are going to furiously suck up all the oxygen that is being supplied to them through the blood vessels. So the blood that's returning back to the heart will have a lower oxygen content. So this is the situation which happens with maybe cardiogenic shock and hypovolemic shock. The second situation is one where there still is an increased demand for oxygen, but the, but the uh, tissues are just not able to extract enough oxygen from the blood. So what happens is the blood that comes back to the heart actually has much higher oxygen content than you would expect from the clinical context that the patient is in. And that's what is distributive shock. So if we have a means of measuring how much extraction of oxygen is actually going on at the level of the tissues, then we would potentially be able to differentiate between these uh, varieties of shock. Now we don't have uh, any readily available clinical monitor to measure the extraction of oxygen, but what we do have is a clinical monitor to look at the uh, amount of oxygen